I think it's always good to look back at the year and see what we did. And I was surprised by some of these things that I'd forgotten that we did. So here we go. So membership was one of the biggest two things we did during the year and had the, one of the two biggest impact changes. So membership here and also Club Express, I'm gonna talk about at the end. And can't find my, anyway, you still hear me? Yep, okay. So the new membership tiers, dividing us into regular tier and a plus tier with added services available and paying a little bit more money was a big change. We also began to accept donations for the first time this year. And we started team service in conjunction with the plus tier. And team service has been, I mean, I've been in the guild for, I don't remember if it's eight, nine or 10 years, somewhere in there. Team service to me is the biggest change that the guild's gone through in that time frame. Very really happening and organized process for people to um, volunteer and support the guild. So inside of team service, it was required in the plus tier. We had over 103, this, this, these numbers are a couple months or late, or I mean prior. So we had over 103 people complete a team service form. We had 228 requests or opportunities posted, listed, and over 113 of those opportunities were fulfilled this year. There's still 115 like open. Now, organizationally, we did a few things. We registered the vcpg.org domain. That was funny. Terry and I were on a phone call and it came up and I said, I wonder if it's available. And it was. So we grabbed it and we migrated all the functional Gmail emails to vcpg.org, like clay order used to be clay orders at Gmail. Now it's clay order or orders that may be plural. I'm not sure. Clay orders at vcpg.org. So we've migrated almost all. There are a couple still outstanding, but now we own the domain, we own the email um, process. We added announcements as a function to a group's IO, the VCPG, VCPG Member Connect uh, system, as a way for us to get time sensitive information out to the membership. We've updated the GOT bylaws, the Guild bylaws, and the gallery guidelines this year. And then sales opportunities this year. So the gallery. There's number information in the next topic related to the gallery. So galleries up in every year for many, many years now. The Ohi Pottery Market, we did over 41,000 in sales with a profit of 6,500. We're having our first Ventura Pottery Market, November 5th and 6th. In conjunction with that, we're participating in the Bowl of Thanks, which is a donation from of our labor, in effect, to uh, the nonprofit downtown that supports the homeless population in Ventura. The Beatrice Woods annual show. The Guild doesn't, well, I guess the Guild makes a little bit of money on the, the application fee, but Guild doesn't make any sales money from the Beatrice Woods show. The, any, the commission split goes to Beatrice Woods. We had six different special sales events at the gallery for all juried members, not just gallery members. We went to the LA Pottery Market as an experiment um, earlier in the month and did like $1,200 in sales over two days. So not a great success money-wise, but we learned a bunch. It was interesting to go to a market that historically has been all antique pottery, mostly commercially made, and find those vendors with the little mix of handmade pottery. Like one, one display had a couple of old Natzler pots, and there were some Ron Probes pots mixed in in someone else's 
display and seeing the prices on them. <laughs> the online store had its third anniversary this year. To date, our sales are 924 and 785 of that went to artists. And in all of our sales opportunities, we've increased our social media presence across, across the board. The gallery, we had our 12 year anniversary this year, opened with 15 artists, now there are 44. We're only, we just finished the third quarter or finishing the third quarter. So our sales through, it's not today, probably through the end of September is up was 176,000. 131,000 of that went to artists. And I can't see that number over there, but whatever that profit number is, 6,000 and something, I believe, is the, like, that's an annualized profit because we, the gallery loses a whole bunch of money in January because our sales are low when we're paying all of our expenses from December, paying the artist sales from December. So that's an annualized profit from like today back 12 months. New signage at the gallery was required by the harbor. We budgeted 7,000 for it, which was close to the quotes that we got. We so far spent 4,400 on the sign. There's still lighting that has to be um, installed, but the harbor told us to wait till they update some of the wiring that will be needed uh, to do those lights. In January, we're doing an upgrade remodel of the gallery. The board budgeted 12,000 for that. And I don't think it's going to come in at that number, um, but we don't know for sure. We're still gathering um, quotes on that. And at the moment, we're planning on doing replacing the um, carpet, taking down all the displays, painting the walls, patching and painting the walls, and replacing the standards, the strips with the holes in them that the brackets go in with the right now they're single track standards and replacing them with double track like commercial grade standards that are really rated to hold the two four maybe 500 pounds of pots that may sit on somebody's shelves or the ones that we're using now are really designed more for home we added a gallery ombudsman position to the gallery committee and um that's rebecca catterall but that's a person who kind of can have their ear to the ground amongst the members of the gallery who may not want to talk to the people on the committee. You know, some people have an authority aversion. <laughs> so anyway, her job is to kind of gather general information or bring that to the gallery committee and help us um, uh, make decisions and stay in touch better. The gallery members now are having a monthly half an hour happy hour gathering. And I think the consignment artists are having one also. I don't I mean, know. It's a quarterly happy hour. Okay, quarterly? Yeah. That must we're not be that we're not that happy. Must be me wish must have been wishing while I wrote that. <laughs> we can do uh, it monthly, but so far it's quarterly. <laughs> quarterly happy. But anyway, it's just an op an opportunity for the people who are, you know doing something together to get together socially instead of just always around work. Play orders is one of the two big team of service successes there in terms of the size of the teams and the coordination of the teams to get the clay orders together and received and sorted and all the paperwork and money related to it. Um, yeah, amazing. So we had quarterly clay orders from Laguna and Aardvark this year, and um, the whole ordering process got streamlined this year. It's much simpler how we, you know, how we do the orders in Excel and how that gets consolidated and that whole Excel spreadsheet that I that I originally created to figure out how much people owe got um, streamlined. Library. So we have a library program that started in February, 2021, about 18 months ago. And that 18 months it's grown from 60 to over 190 titles. That's books and um, videos, DVDs. 
in the last, so far this year, 53 items have been checked out. And I would, you know, I just say, I don't remember to go there and look, but every time I've gone and actually looked through the list, I'm like, oh, I'd actually be interested in seeing that or looking at that. And I wind up with two or three things. And then I forget again for a few months. There's, it's a good library. Oh, check out what's new. <laughs> programs. So these are our monthly programs. And this year they've been, to, this is me, you know, fabulous. We've developed new relationships with people and across the globe. I mean, who would have thought a year ago that we'd have the New Zealand Ceramic Association do a presentation for our little group sitting here in, uh, you know, the Ventura County area. Pretty amazing. One thing we've noticed this year and, la and last year, but that we have a larger attendance at meetings than we ever did in person. I mean, we had many in-person meetings with 25 people, 30, 35 was kind of the norm, the normal top. And we started recording all the programs and posting them to YouTube. I think that actually began last year, but it's been no, I didn't. It st really officially started after the team service started. So it's been primarily this year. I did a couple of them last year, but it hasn't been a regular thing until this year. Actually, we started recording them before COVID hit. We it was a live recording, and then we posted them. Yes, but it was kind of scattershot until after the team service thing started, and uh, Marie took over doing the videos and that was actually happening every month. And then we also started the semi-annual clay challenge. Um, been doing, we might've started that last fall actually, but that's happening this year. In terms of outreach, we had two winter residencies, which were in, both in Ojai. And we had two summer residencies, one in Ojai, one in Goleta. And the one Galita was the first resident that worked with uh, somebody up at the clay studio in uh, in Galita. We had student awards at Santa Barbara City College and Ventura Community College. And the residencies and the student awards include a guild membership. And we've done five weeks of elementary school classes in conjunction with or via the Ventura Arts Council. All right, so we have this kind of in the back, vague, big sky project that we don't talk about a whole lot. So here's some more about that. We're, it's really the, the kind of the, the dream of or the looking at having a second location that would be bigger than just having a store that would have space to have studio rentals, to have classes, to have workshops, to have a retail space and a gallery space. The guesses we've done kind of doing mock-ups is that all of that would take about 10,000 square feet. The big question, of course, is funding. We don't have that kind of money sitting around in any of our accounts. Another question is, given the, the jump from what we how we currently operate and the size of what we manage to that, maybe it's something that should be looked at in stages. Maybe it's something that as we go through it, it's like we really want to eliminate. Now that doesn't make sense for us to do A, but we should do B and C. All that's still up in the air. We're just you know, inquiring. So part of that is beginning to plan for creating a 501c3 so we can accept tax deductible donations. The estimate is that's about a $3,000 legal fee. And it's not just so that we can take tax deductible donations. It's so we qualify for grants, like the state and the federal government will have a lot of art money available. We can't apply for it and accept it. It allows us to accept um, bequeathments, bequests, you know, people who are in the guild, people who are friends of in the guild who may want to leave us money when they die. We, we you know, we, I think need to be a 501c3 to accept that without it having any tax consequences to us. So we're in the exploration part of that. We've got a couple lawyers and we'll begin talking to them soon. Well, marketing is 
I'd say the other big cheering team service success. Um, like Ellen has recruited and put together a really talented team of designers and photographers who really up the game of the guild in terms of the materials that we have and use in marketing. We've increased social media for all events. QR codes around all the marketing materials so that the marketing material may be a great photo and a little bit of information, but there's a QR code that'll get you more granular information if you're interested. And we now distribute marketing materials for events. And this is good. I might see my list. I have a little line of people here that I can't get my cursor to show up, so I can't shrink you. I can't read everything here. So all those places now, there are people who distribute marketing materials in all these cities, Ojai Ventura, Thousand Oaks, Goleta, Santa Barbara, Solving, Simi Valley, Newbury Park, and something else there I can't see. Um, at the beginning of the year, primarily we distributed things in Ohio and Ventura and occasionally a little bit someplace else so that there are teams of people doing all this is pretty remarkable in a year. And we had a major story on the Guild in the October Ventana Magazine. Um, Ellen worked on that for a while and uh, called The Art of the Earth. It's about the Guild, about the Bowl of Thanks and the show and a couple of the potters who were involved in that process. And then we come to Club Express. To me, this is the other gonna be the next like big impact on the Guild. So we began this conversation well over a year ago, looking at talking about and, and doing a little bit of looking for an online membership platform where we could manage our membership information instead of just being in an Excel spreadsheet where it could be would be public, where any one of us could log in and update our information if we want to, where we get an alert from the platform saying, hey, it's time to renew and we can go and do it online and blink anyway, all in one one place. And then when team service started, we knew that team service, the ability to manage volunteering or team service was now another requirement. Yeah. So Faz and Terry and I primarily looked at all the top platforms, had demos in a few of them, um, had demo accounts and played with them. And all along the way, we ran into things that they just didn't do that were on our, they have to be able to do list. Like doing reporting, <laughs> like ad hoc reporting. At most of them, even if they had the information, we couldn't search it. We'd have to export it and then play with it in Excel is one example. Or Every time you wanted to send an email, you had to send it to all your members. You had to do some kind of other workaround in order to send to subgroups. Anyway, we wound up with initially dismissing Club Express actually, and then coming back around and taking a second look and discovered they actually did everything we wanted and more. So the board approved a $4,600 budget to get us going, which um, that's paying them to build to build the system for us. I mean, that's designed so we could have done it, but we couldn't have done it by January, and we couldn't have done it without there being things that we have to fix afterwards. It's like they know the system. So we agreed, we decided it was better to just have them do it, and we'd manage them doing it. So... The big thing here with Club Express is that it'll allow us to have almost all of our functions behind one login. And it's launching January, 2023, the new membership year. So new membership renewals or new memberships will take place here. So here are, here's a list of some of what it'll allow us to do. The website's moving to Club Express. They're in the process of redesigning um, the website based on a, a, rough, a rough design that Terry and Faz and I came up with from looking Alex, at- Alex, 
Alex's. Um, um, oh yeah, it was Ellen's group. We came up with some stuff, but it was actually Ellen's group. We went, we went, mock, we walked a few of the marketing people through Club, a little bit of Club Express, showed them, them some templates, and also showed them some more customized sites that that they had done, and they came back with something. You're absolutely right. And we passed that on to Club Express, who's building it. So it's going to allow us to manage new and renewing memberships. It'll allow monthly and annual donations, like the patron. So someone like me, I may decide, okay, $50 a month to be a plus member. I send money monthly to other nonprofits. Why am I not sending $10 or $20 a month to the Potter's Guild? It allows to manage team service, to manage events, marketing and registration for the same, for the events, member portfolios, similarly, like, like on, the, on the current website, but they're a little more sophisticated. We can manage a document library. So I know about this time last year, it could have been early in 2022, but I remember talking to two people about how hard it is to get to like guild documents. Like if I wanna see the financials, where are they? And if I wanna see this, where do I find it? And I said that that was on our, that was a priority for the year. And actually looked at a number of other commercially available, like normally available, like Dropbox and Box and so forth. And they just, for the amount of money, they weren't doing what I thought we needed. Anyway, Club Express does. <laughs> So our documents will move there. Let's us manage news groups and discussion, discussion forums so we can replace group IO, like do the same things behind your single login. Have a public and member event calendar. The newsletter can be created and sent from there. If you're familiar with MailChimp, but kind of a similar, a similar um, design format. Um, create and send announcements like we do from group IO. So here are a couple of other things like tech support. So for the Club Express functions, they provide the support. If you, you know, if you upload your photos and they don't look your photos look right to you, but something's happening that's wrong as you're uploading your photos, you don't call us, you call them. And they've got a whole team of people that um, support their stuff. And then our stuff, which is like forms, specific processes, documents, videos, we'll support that. But there's a, there's a whole tech support module there that allows us to create how-to documents and have them linked to the functions. So you, you, know, you, you press the help button on a page you're having problems with, it'll show you documents, it'll show you whatever how-to videos or whatever is related to that thing. Um, our video library, you'll be able to access it from inside of Club Express. They'll, they'll still be hosted on YouTube, but you'll be able to get them again from this single source. If we want to, we can move the online store there. They have a function for that. If we want to, we can do our financials there. It has a built-in QuickBooks export in the format that CPAs need. And there's more that that's not here. So I mean, once we get the basic part of it together, that's that's the membership, team service, you know, roughing out the group, the forums, and the documents and stuff. We'll start having conversations about that. You know, what what do we want to do? Phase two. Did you mention the portfolios because that's going to be? I did. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, I didn't hear in that at the end, but yeah, the portfolios will get migrated because they're going to disappear from the old site. On we go. So that's that's that. I I gotta I can't short circuit through this. Here we go again. So 2023 and beyond. Here's some things that are at least currently on the table. We want to 
reach out and we'll find ways to get more information from the membership about really what do they want. I mean, we, we, you know, they're, they're between the different committees and the board, there are, I don't know, 30 people, maybe 40 people tops who have their fingers in lots of these pies. And a lot of what we do comes from us. I mean, some of it comes from as ideas from outside and we talk to other people about things as, as um, like if we're thinking about something, I'll randomly ask people when I see them in different places, you know, what they, what they think. But we, we wanna close the loop a little more. And in a, in a conversation we had recently at the board, we realized that we still think, well, actually we were having the conversation about what is an active member. And an active member by, def by, de by definition in the bylaws is just someone who pays their dues. But we think of it, or I should say, it seemed like the, a, a number of us, I'll say I thought of it, and the number of us in the board who are talking about it thought of it like, well, what are the things, primary things we do? So an active member pays their dues, they they show up at they you know come to membership to the to the member meetings they participate in sales events but somehow it seemed it seemed to be keyed frequently from who does and doesn't show up at meetings and as we were talking about this and talk and talking to a couple of people randomly about this they're like I'm really not interested in the member meetings. I do this because I get to play with people and I get to order my clay and whatever. And like we realize we need to really get in touch with the various reasons people are in the guild and really um, use I'll use a variety of ways to measure what how people are being active and not the smaller smaller window that kind of is historical. Okay. Um, to continue to build toward making the big sky dream or whatever version of it a reality. Continue to build community, strengthening opportunities for members to engage and play in our sandbox. And to remember, all of us to remember the growth and success of your Potter's Guild is in your hands. So that's all I got.